Good morning, kindergarten. All right, let's do some calendar time, and then if we have time, we can read a little book when we're done. All right, here's our calendar. There's our new month. It's not December anymore. Do you remember what month the new month is? It starts with a J, so it starts with a J, J sound. It's J, January, but you can just write J, A in in your journals. That's the abbreviation instead of writing all of January. And then we have our new year. It's not 2020 anymore. It used to be 2020, but now it's not a zero there, it's a one. So now it's 2021. So that's our new year. All right, our last month before it was January was December. There's December all the way down there with the D. Now we start all the way at the top up here for January. It's our new month. So if this month is January, what month is next month going to be? Starts with an F, 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 February. So next month will be February. Okay, let's figure out the day of January it is. Yesterday was January 7th. So what comes after number 7? Okay, so January 7th was yesterday. So let's count. Let's see what today is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So today is January 8th. So there's my number eight. And we're going to put it right in there and figure out the day of the week. So we point to the date and we go up, 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 up. The day of the week starts with an F. So it's F, F, Friday today. Let's move my arrow down. Yesterday was Thursday with the TH. Tomorrow will be Friday with the F. Friday. There we go. Let's see what else we have in January this month. Here was New Year's Day last week, last Friday. We were still on winter break. We had no school then. We had no school on Monday for winter break. And then you had a regular school online with Miss Cornblith this week. And then here's today. So if this is today, January 8th, Friday, what's tomorrow going to be? What do you think day of the week tomorrow will be? Saturday. Tomorrow will be Saturday. All right, let's do our pattern today. First, we're going to do our pattern by shape. You ready? Star, square, star, circle. Star, square, star, circle. So star would be next. Let's do it by color next. We have green, teal, green, pink, green, teal, green, pink. So green would be next. All right, let's go over our weather. So it is not fall anymore. The first day of our new season, the first day of winter, was December 21st. So now the season is winter, and it's sunny and cold outside. So our season is winter now. It's not fall anymore. Now it's winter. Okay, let's go over our, let's see, day of school. Okay, so let's see. We had yesterday was our 76th day of school. We've been in school 76 days. What do you think today's going to be? We're in our seven row now. What do you think? So we have 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 70. We're in our seven row, so 77. So 77 is a 7 and a 7 makes 77. Let's see, so we filled up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 days in this row. We have 1, 2, 3 more days to go before we fill that row. And then we'll only have 2 more rows to go until our 100th day of school. That is very exciting. All right, let's read a little book, and then we'll be all done with morning meeting today. So we're going to read The Little Polar Bear. And this is a book about some polar animals, because I know you've been learning about polar animals with Ms. Cornblith and science this week. And this, I know you've been reading some nonfiction books. This is just a fiction book. This is just for fun. It's pretend, okay? This is not a real book about polar animals. This one's just for fun. 
It was a big day for Lars. He was going with his father on his first hunting trip. Lars was white all over, just like his father. In fact, at the North Pole, where Lars lived, everything was white because it was covered in ice and snow. Lars' father showed him how to do all kinds of things, follow tracks, swim, and dive. He talked and talked, and Lars listened silently, paying close attention. Once, his father disappeared underwater and stayed so long that Lars began to worry. But when his father finally reappeared, he had a big fish for dinner. When it was time to go to sleep, Lars's father said, make a big pile of snow to protect yourself from the wind, like I do. Lars was proud of his pile, but also very tired. He quickly fell asleep, just like his father. But during the night, the ice began to crack. The piece where Lars was lying broke off. When Lars woke up in the morning, he was all alone in the middle of the sea. It was getting warmer and warmer, and the piece of ice that Lars's pile of snow and Lars's pile of snow were getting smaller and smaller. When the ice was almost completely melted, Lars saw a big barrel drifting by. Luckily, Lars was able to reach the barrel and climb on top of it. Then a storm began to rage. As Lars clung to the bobbing barrel, he missed his father and his pile of snow more and more. After the storm, Lars drifted on the sea for a long time. At last he saw land, but he could not see any snow or ice. Almost everything was green and the sun was very warm. Lars carefully slid off the barrel and stepped onto the beach. Oh, so Lars is a polar animal, so he's used to living very, very, very cold places where there's snow, but look, now this is just pretend, it's make-believe, but he traveled in the ocean and he's arriving somewhere tropical. It's hot and tropical, you can tell by the plants that are growing there. The beach was hot and yellow. It burned Lars's paws. He ran to a river nearby, but just as he was about to plunge in, a very big tan animal sprung out of the water. Boo, it said. Lars quickly ran to hide. Oh, I was only joking, called the big tan animal. I'm Henry the hippopotamus. Who are you? And why are you all white? Lars didn't know how to answer. To the last question, where I come from, everything is white, he said. He told Henry about his long journey and asked him how he could get back to his father. Henry listened sympathetically, but he seemed confused. He wiggled his ears and squirmed and finally said, Hmm, the only one who can help you is Marcus the Eagle. He has traveled all over the world. He'll know where you come from and how to get you back there. But we'll have to cross the river, go through the jungle, and climb the mountains to reach him. Lars was happy to go, but when he looked at the river, he said, The only problem is that I can't swim very well yet. No problem at all, said Henry and laughed. Climb on my back. I won't sink. Lars was astonished by all the things he saw in the jungle. Henry patiently explained everything. Lars especially liked the tall brown stalks that Henry called trees. They were such fun to climb. In one brown stalk sat a funny green animal, which suddenly turned white, just like Lars. It's a chameleon, Henry said. It can change its color. Lars thought that was a handy thing to be able to do. At the edge of the jungle, the mountains began. It was a bit cooler and Lars felt more comfortable there. Henry found climbing difficult, but Lars helped by telling him where to step. After a while, Henry was exhausted. That's enough for today, he said. Tomorrow we will continue. Let's rest here and look at the nice view. As Lars looked out over the land and sea, he began to feel homesick. Cheer up, said Henry. You'll be home again soon. The next day they climbed higher. Henry had to stop often to catch his breath. But at last he called, here comes Marcus. A huge bird swooped down near Lars. Lars ducked. Don't be afraid, said Henry. Marcus seems gruff, but he's really quite friendly. Henry said good morning to Marcus and politely explained why they had come. The eagle looked at Lars and then said, well, well, a polar bear in the tropics. You're a long way from home, aren't you, young man? Fortunately, I can arrange your passage back. Tomorrow morning, I will have Samson fetch you from the beach. 
Thank you very much, sir, Lars said shyly. The next morning, Henry and Lars met Marcus on the beach. Right on time, said Marcus proudly as a huge gray whale arrived. So do we know what kind of animal this is? Do we remember? It's one of our polar animals. This is an orca. Some people call them killer whales, but they're not actually whales. They're actually a type of dolphin, and they're called orcas, and they're a type of dolphin. But their nickname is killer whale, but they're really a type of dolphin, not a whale. Although Henry was happy for Lars, he was also sorry to see him go. Take care of yourself, he said sadly. Thanks for everything, Henry, Lars called as he swam away. Marcus flew along a bit to see them on their way. Henry stood alone on the beach. He kept watching for a long time after Lars and the whale had disappeared, the orca. Samson swam a long way until they were surrounded by ice and snow. We must be near your home now, he said. At the same moment, Lars called, there he is, my father. Father, I'm back. Lars's father couldn't believe his eyes. There was Lars riding on the top of an orca. Lars's father was very tired for looking, as from looking for Lars, but he wasn't too tired to catch a big fish for Samson as a thank you. Samson waved as he swam away. And now, said Lars's father, we must go straight home because your mother is very worried. On the way home, Lars rode on his father's back. Everything was white and he was surrounded by snow and ice again. But this time, Lars talked and talked while his father listened. He told his father all about the amazing things he'd seen. Henry, the tall brown stalks called trees, Marcus, and much more. You didn't meet anyone who was white, like us, asked his father in surprise. Nobody except the chameleon, said Lars, but that doesn't count. Lars had to laugh by himself because his father didn't understand his joke. Oh, and there's Lars, the polar bear, eating a banana. That's funny. All right, so that was just a pretend book, just a fiction book for fun. All right, everyone, I hope you have a good rest of your Friday. You can do some chapel next. Bye.